Hi guys, this is jsno.com and I'm here with the Nubia Red Magic 6 Pro for a full review. This one is a gaming phone which was unveiled this spring and it still holds its own on account of the very high refresh rate. It's actually 165 Hz. Plus, it's one of the few phones out there which has a fan inside a powerful 20,000 RPM one and you can also attach a fan to it as you saw in the unboxing. Okay, so the price is around 699 euros and uh, it has a triple camera at the backside, the powerful Snapdragon 888 CPU and 16 gigs of RAM. Let's see what it can offer us. So it's available in the following hues, Eclipse Black and Moon Silver and design wise it's obviously thick. Since it's packs, it packs so much technology, 9.7 millimeters in thickness and it weighs a hefty 220 grams. Uh, you can see here the glass back, which is, I would say, more discreet than what uh, Asus and Xiaomi Black Shark are offering right now. I mean, the fact that the lighting happens here and in these areas, that's what I mean by discreet. Even the camera area is a bit discreet. This is a nice touch, the triangular LED flash for the camera. Aside from that, aside from the glass back, which, mind you, is a bit curved, it's shaped a bit like an American football, which means the phone is a bit prone to dropping and being a bit slippery if you hold it in portrait mode. Aside from that, we have an aluminum frame and obviously glass at the front side with, I would say, medium size uh, edges and uh, bezel thickness. Not too thick, but also not too slim. It may seem like a massive phone, but it's conceived for landscape usage rather than portrait, so that's where it holds its own. It's very well built, it's, I would say, built like a tank. It has a screen protector, the price from the factory, and the pretty comfy buttons. Maybe the power one is a bit too small for my liking. We also have these two here, the triggers for the gaming. This is the air vent for the fan, another air vent. These are the volume buttons, and this is the special gaming button, which triggers a special area. So overall, Definitely not one hand usage material, but well built, premium materials and comfy landscape usage. Okay, so I should also mention that the side vents are a bit noisy when you turn on the fan. You probably heard that in the unboxing when I put the phone close to my microphone. It doesn't have IP68, just in case you're wondering. And next up, we move towards the screen. It's a giant 6.8 inch AMOLED panel with full HD resolution and 165 Hz refresh rate, which is something still very rare. Gorilla Glass protection. And when it comes to the actual viewing experience, we have this uh, clip here, which basically shows you what we're dealing with. So first and foremost, uh, Nubia didn't want to cut a punch hole in the screen. They put the selfie camera here in a discreet manner. I would say the screen is immersive, provides vivid colors which, by the way, are pretty decently calibrated. Quite the wide view angles. Maybe not as much as the Samsung phones, but still pretty wide view angles. Decent contrast in the sun and satisfying brightness. Now, aside from this, uh, let's see what our tests have shown. So we're going to go here. And first, I should mention that we have a Pentile Matrix Pixel arrangement. And the brightness test shows, I would say, modest result compared to my expectations. 421 lux units. Uh, I would have expected something like 500 or 600. Usually gaming phones have quite a bit. For example, its biggest rival, the Asus ROG 5 Pro, has 651 lux. The predecessor Red Magic 5G is also superior, so don't get me wrong, 421 is still pretty good and uh, we're surpassing a few other major phones out there. I feel that we should be either on par or surpassing the Galaxy S20 Ultra and we're also surpassing by a bit the iPhone 12 Pro Max, so not that bad. Now, if you want to change the refresh rate, which from the factory it's set pretty high, you can go here to the display section. Uh, and you also have the screen refresh rate, you can set it to 60, 90, 120 or 165 hertz. And that's pretty much it. There are also some color options, but those will be detailed in the text review. Now inside the phone, there's the famous powerful Qualcomm Snapdragon 888 CPU, which is accompanied by 16 gigs of RAM and 256 gigabytes of storage. It's UFS 3.1, it's LPDDR5, all the good stuff, no micro SD and no lag. And obviously benchmarks are going to be sky high with this setup. An interesting thing, uh, most times the fan will turn on when it senses a benchmark. I try to deactivate it. So in Antutu 8, we're on the third spot, only beaten by the ROG Phone 5 Pro and the Red Magic 6S Pro, which was just unveiled, so quite high. 
In Geekbench 5, Multicore were getting the top 10 treatment again. 8th spot, just above the Xperia 1 Mark III and a Galaxy S21, actually the whole S21 series, uh, beaten by the rival uh, ROG Phone 5 Pro. While in the gaming test, uh, the 3D Mark test should be here somewhere. Uh, I actually did it, so let's actually go ahead and check it out in the gallery. We have quite a few shots, as you can see here, and quite a few screenshots, because this gallery is pretty intricate. Okay, so here we are. We did 3D Mark tests, which look pretty impressive result-wise. With these results that we got here, uh, it's actually placed on the sixth spot. It's below the Oppo Find X3 Pro and below the ROG Phone 5 Pro, but above the OnePlus 9 Pro and the Xiaomi Mi 11 Ultra, which is uh, a very powerful handset. Now, when it comes to the temperature, I'm going to go here and see what we achieved, uh, because there are quite a few tests in that regard. Okay, so in benchmarks, you can see the official result is 37 degrees Celsius, which is excellent. However, I took three tests. Number one, no fan activated. It was 51 degrees Celsius. The phone got very hot during benchmarks. Number two, with the inside fan, 47.4 degrees Celsius, hot again. And number three, with the attachment, with the accessory fan you saw in the unboxing and I'm going to show you later, coupled with the one inside the phone, we achieve 37 degrees Celsius. Once again, that's benchmarks. In games, which matter more, 37.2 degrees Celsius achieved just with the inner fan. So that's that. And since I keep promising you some fan action, I'm going to go here, press it, and you can actually hear it towards my microphone. I would say that the noise level should be maybe on par with a laptop's fan, but maybe not a gaming laptop's fan because that could be a bit louder. Now, battery-wise, you need to sustain all this power with a generous battery, and in this case, we have a fifth, excuse me, 5,050 mAh unit with 66 watt charging. Our version came with a 30 watt charger. Some international versions even come with a 100 watt charger or even more. The results are satisfying, as you can see here for the video playback, 19 hours and 10 minutes. It's pretty impressive. Uh, it gets past several flagships like the Huawei Mate 40 Pro, iPhone 12 Pro Max. I'm pretty impressed by it. It even beats its arch nemesis, Asus ROG Phone 5 Pro. It sits below the Galaxy S21 Ultra and ROG Phone 3. Continuous usage is a bit more modest, but still pretty impressive. 13 hours and 26 minutes, it goes past ROG Phone 5 Pro, OnePlus 9 and Realme GT 5G, stays below the Motorola H20 Pro and ROG Phone 3, so there's that. Charging requires 1 hour and 2 minutes and after only 30 minutes, you should be all set with 60% juice for your battery, should be enough for quite a long gaming session. Of course, you also have those extra uh, battery saver features. When it comes to the music, at the top side you can see here an audio jack. This is the top speaker and this is the bottom speaker. We have the promise of stereo functionality here. Some extra tweaks in the settings area, but only achievable those equalizer options with headphones on. So I'm talking about DTS signal, music mode, movie mode and game mode. And we actually have here a sample opened up too, so, so you can listen to the speakers. Okay, so you can clearly see which one is uh, bearing the weight. The bottom one is much more powerful than the top one. The experience is overbearing. I mean, it's too loud to the point where it actually may distort some tunes, especially those guitar heavy ones. Anyways, enough bass for me, a loud volume, um, good high notes, good voice, but I would say keep it at 80%. There's no need to get that loud. Uh, when it comes to the other tests, we have them here. Oh, the typical acoustic sample test is actually modest, 80.5 decibels at the bottom and 81.1 decibels at the top, even though in real life I actually feel that the bottom speaker is more powerful. Now, when it comes to the other one, the gaming test, we got up to around 96 decibels. In real life it feels much more powerful when you're playing a game, but still a bit below the latest ROG phones from Asus. That's the feeling I got here. When it comes to the cameras, gaming phones have never been powerhouses, or rarely so. Uh, this one only offers 8-megapixel selfie shooter here, 
and a triple back camera here with a triangular LED flash. The main camera is a 64 megapixel shooter, then there is an 8 megapixel ultra wide and 2 megapixel macro. It films in 8K if you can believe it and 4K 60 frames per second. It has a crazy, crazy amount of options. I cannot understand why they decided to put so many here in the camera family area. Electronic aperture, star trail, time lapse, clone, trajectory, panorama, macro, zoom blur, a lot. A lot. And the biggest problem I have with this interface is the fact that you are not getting access to the ultra wide camera unless you go to the pro mode. So this is where you swap from the regular to the ultra wide. It's a pretty odd choice and as you can see there is now a bit of a problem with the auto rotate unless I killed it from here somewhere. It's actually on. Every now and then this happens with all phones. Don't worry, even my own iPhone has this problem sometimes. Okay, we're not here about that. We're here to talk about the gallery. The shots we've taken with the phone, we have them all here. It's actually interesting to see them separated. The selfies are on one side. Uh, okay, so you can see we have a lot of them, even some food photos. I'll start with the daytime photos. So first and foremost, they're going to look great on this screen, but if you watch them on a computer screen, maybe a whole different story altogether. Now the colors feel satisfying, but the dynamic range is limited. The zoom is quite impressive considering it's digital zoom, so there's that. The sky may look a bit weird when seen on a computer. And uh, the only time the dynamic range was fine was when the sun was lacking. If the sun is out, the sky will be white and the colors will be a bit weird. And uh, we do have a lot of details, that one I can confirm. And the images are very crisp, very clear, so you are getting that nicely. You'll notice a lack of ultra wide shots, they're coming towards the end after I discovered that the ultra wide option was hidden in the pro section. Okay, uh, these are urban shots in Bucharest, capital of Romania, and this is the zoom in action. Once again, I'm pretty impressed by it considering it's only digital zoom. Okay, and here we have even more colors, beautiful reds, a bunch of graffitis. And at the end, you can see some nice close-ups like this one. It's actually the only one I took and it was spot on. And some food photos with some crepes. I sure hope you ate today. These are French pancakes, crepes and both uh, salty and also sweet like this one here with bananas, uh, pistachio and uh, so much more. So for food photos, you're all set. Provided you don't get too close and intend a macro, it may not come out the way you want it to. I actually think I activated a special mode because at some point the colors of this sauce changed. So uh, this is a regular color and this is the boosted color. We can tell the difference. The boosted exaggerates a bit with the colors. Selfies are kept in a separate area. Those are the selfies. I feel they're a bit soft. The ultra wide camera doesn't exactly, excuse me, the front camera doesn't exactly impress. I mean, the details are particularly the problem here and the texture isn't great. Uh, the skin is a bit too smooth and the shots are a bit too dark for my taste. So I wonder what happens when you're playing a game. By the way, these ones are taken the, towards the dusk and these ones are when the sun is out. They're a bit clearer and somehow the focus doesn't fall exactly on my face. It seems more focused on the background, which I find to be a bit odd. So maybe next time better selfie camera wouldn't hurt. And also I forgot to show you, uh, we have some ultra wide shots here towards the end. So regular shot, it's pretty lit up, ultra wide, it's a bit darker and uh, there's a bluish hue which appears every once in a while. Regular shot, ultra wide shot, but at least the clouds are more realistic. So that's that. For a gaming phone, it's fine, but to be honest, I've seen a bit better in the camera. The selfie camera needs some improvement. Okay, so let's check out some of the night shots we've taken and I have to say, I'm actually more impressed by the low light shots than I was with the daytime ones. This phone seems to prefer darkness to the light. Now, I have to say from the get-go that uh, even though the shots you don't like, those are saved when you activate the night mode. And uh, frankly speaking, this is a light-hungry handset, which uh, sometimes even manages to beat uh, and fight uh, flagships. For example, I find that it's superior to the Galaxy S20 series, uh, S20 and S20 Plus at least, when it comes to low light shots. Even the zoom is quite okay here. I know that some of the light sources are big, but uh, the problem can be solved when you activate the night mode. Okay, so clarity is fine. We have pretty good details and nice color hues for the low light captures. 
you can see here the details in the grass in the buildings in the beautiful buildings facade so definitely if you want tourism and touristic shots taken with this handset you can totally deliver especially if you also use a special night mode so so far so good uh, i would even go as far as to say that it can even fight uh, the galaxy s21 which is no small feat we're done with the photos and once again i'm more impressed by the low light ones than the daytime ones and if you want to check out some of the videos to take on the phone we got this app here and we have quite a few videos now i'm going to start off with um, uh, maybe a stabilization test which i think it's no not this one it's probably the one before it should be longer it's this one so color me impressed by the stabilization test at least the one that involves walking around in the town dodging people and capturing scenery i mean it's not the best stabilization in the world it's not exactly flagship level but it still does its job fine and uh, let's see others by the way once again you can shoot 8k videos here and the 4k videos i did actually have a ton of detail i particularly love the red hues that we have here but when you're panning i noticed quite a bit of shakiness you can probably tell but the way the exposure changes is quite fine even though the sky remains white at times the colors are pretty nicely calibrated it's an all-rounder when it comes to that aspect uh, let's see some more here uh, now the selfie video isn't that impressive uh, i feel there's a bit of a contrast problem stabilization isn't perfect but the face texture and um, uh, the expression of the face is pretty well represented however i've seen better even on some mid-range phones so there should be that aspect it's not a vlogging camera for sure okay and here we have a focus test on the foreground and on the background uh, it actually took me three videos to realize the ideal distance when you're too close it's not exactly a flattering experience and we have more here this one is closer to the sunset so it's a bit darker and once again pretty impressive zoom even though we don't have a telephoto camera this one has a pretty limited dynamic range but when we're switching to a less difficult area things look quite fine so if you want clarity and details you should be fine the red colors are nice the zoom was a bit surprising and stabilization is fine when you're actually walking around but not when you're panning which is not exactly impressive those were daytime video this is the low light video and i have to say it's quite noisy there are some reflections here and there but the light sources are correctly represented here and if you start walking around there's quite a bit of flicker so not a flattering experience in the end okay so things to remember here lots of details pretty good colors even though the dynamic range is limited in the sun it handles better the darker corners of the medium you're capturing when it comes to connectivity this is a dual sim phone with 5g and wi-fi 6 bluetooth 5.1 it has gps dual band and at the same time uh, it also has uh, uh, NFC and USB-C 3.0 at the, at the bottom as a port plus USB OTG. The cores were loud and clear with the earpiece at the top side and uh, we also took some tests, uh, the usual ones we always take. I'm talking about the famous speed test. We have quite a few of them here. I am pretty impressed by the Wi-Fi one, 820 mega per second downloads, 851 mega per second uploads and for 4G that's Wi-Fi by the way of course and for 4G 278 mega per second downloads and 54.9 mega per second uploads I would say we're doing quite fine and latency was never a problem when using the handset now we've reached probably the most important part of the review the software the handset is running on Android 11 with Red Magic UI 4.0 on top I mean the basic icons here are a bit uh, ugly to be honest but you can customize and change the theme from the option so you can go here and uh, select a few themes which will also change your icon packs so there's definitely a choice here you can even opt for a lighter one closer to a more normal phone if you're scared by these icons some people think they have personality other people don't prefer them it's a question of choice now aside from that the experience is rather typical we have those windows here for the reasons and uh, we should also have the ability to do a split screen between files and the browser just one example here 
Okay, uh, aside from that, we have the drop down section with the notifications and quick settings, quite a few useful ones. In the settings department, we have a lot of options for notification and status bar. You can replace these buttons with swipes. We have Neo AI with smart game and uh, Neo Speed features for gamers. You can do some light strip settings. You can choose colors from here and select media atmosphere, select the instance when they'll shine. The shining parts are this one, this one and this one. And uh, we can also have settings for the cooling fan. There are settings for the navigation, digital well-being and for security we have either password, fingerprint or face unlock. I'm actually using the face unlock right now, but if I were using the fingerprint it should be somewhere in this area and I have to say it's reasonably fast. We also have always on display, which should be found in the display here, always on display, which can be customized with GIFs, videos, images and text, so that's nice. And uh, I think we should be around the part where we show you the actual gaming experience. If you trigger this button, the fan has started. It's quite loud. I'm pretty sure you can hear it on my microphone. Okay, you just heard it. And that's basically your launcher. So if you pull from the side, we have quite a few options here. Uh, some of them are usable in games. So let's access Real Racing to give it a proper spin. You can also see the areas lighting up here and if you pull from the side this is the game enhancement area you can choose between auto mode gpu mode cpu turbo and super performance which will allocate more resources to your experience uh, you can also choose gaming modes like shooter mobile or auto and see if you're required to use a gyroscope you have the shoulder trigger settings i have them activated right now and i'm going to use them and uh, several uh, sharing features like whatsapp discord and so forth you can change the refresh rate here use an aim assist in shooters uh, you can choose the way you record you have your macros you have your 4d shocks for proper haptic feedback and you can block calls notifications and change sensitivity and a lot more now, uh, we're here in the game, so I'm actually going to use these buttons and try to play this title if it works. Okay, next race. So I associated two commands here, uh, left and right. Oops, almost dropped the phone. So left and right are the top buttons you see here, the shoulder buttons. I'm using them right now. Instead of pressing on the screen, I only press the screen if I need to break which is something I'm going to have to be doing to take the uh, corners properly. So that's the idea of the shoulder buttons. You get rid of the whole action and attempt to press the screen and try to fit your fingers on the panel. Okay, so uh, this is just one example. Of course, there are shooters, there are mobile games to play with here. And um, aside from that, you should also know that the buttons are pretty responsive and uh, they're quite comfortable to use okay so this is pretty much it uh, there's more to explore here let's say if you go to the game space you have here each of the games you can modify the cover and uninstall you also have the external device library you can attach accessories to the device and change the color effects and so much more and speaking of which let's uh, access and associate and connect the fan you saw in the unboxing Okay, so this is called the Red Magic Dual Core Cooler and it takes the temperature of the device a few degrees lower. Now, you're going to attach it like this. Uh, let's see if you can do a proper job of it. We did it in the unboxing and we're going to do it again. Okay, and to power it up because it requires power, you're going to have to be using this cable which is bundled with the device. It's an USB-C to USB-C cable. It would be ideal for it to be connected to an external power source, but uh, so far I'm using the phone. I'm saying ideal because uh, it shouldn't hamper your gaming experience. This is how it lights up. And there are actually uh, special settings for it here. Okay, so now we can custom it. Uh, you can switch it to automatic on or off. You can make it strong or super strong. You can have it to be colorful and choose the lighting effects. And for more version, you can definitely upgrade it. Uh, I mean, it's very intensive. Uh, it makes the device vibrate quite a bit and it also cools it down 
by let's say five or seven degrees so quite useful in more intensive games and longer gaming sessions okay so that's pretty much it with the red magic ui area let me just turn it down with the button i think you figured out what we're getting here and if you want to learn the price of the accessory you can find it in the description of the clip and also in the unboxing video we did and we're approaching the end of the review uh, you just saw the gaming experience. There are few games which support 165 Hz, uh, Real Racing 3 is among them. Vainglory is another and I think there's also another shooter or card game. Now, aside from that, you can pinch the screen and have your wallpapers, icons and widgets selected here. You can see them. And as far as the pre-installed apps goes, uh, not much to mention here. There's external device, file manager, gallery. Uh, Nubia transfer, there's a notepad for note taking, settings, recorder, YouTube and a classical Google suite and I think we're about done. And since we're at the end of the review it's time we access our website and uh, told you a few pros and cons for the current handset. I know, I know, the successor is already here, the Nubia Red Magic 6S Pro. We've already unboxed it, a review will be available very soon. Now, as far as this phone is concerned, the price is pretty appealing. Uh, there should be a drop with the follow-up already appearing. So, appealing price, great performance, uh, also a lot of options when it comes to just triggering this button and having all of those features activated. And I'm talking about the customization of your gaming experience and the lighting and so forth. A pretty solid battery, uh, especially for the video playback. Uh, the charge is quite fast. We have loudspeakers here. Uh, great food photos, which I wasn't actually expecting from this handset, so if you're a food blogger and a gamer, this should properly fit you. We also have uh, a good all-around camera when it comes to the colors and clarity and the details of the filming. Nice texture, good night shots, actually surprising night shots, and uh, I also have to say that the connectivity was very fast. Uh, once again, those are the pros. On the cons list, the phone is quite a bit slippery and massive doesn't have IP68 certification. The screen is only able to reach 421 lux units. It should be brighter. Uh, it's quite loud, the fan inside. It gets a bit overheated without the uh, activity from the fans. The photos you saw before have a rather limited dynamic range if there's a lot of sun around. The videos are shaky, the panning ones, I mean. The selfies were underwhelming. And the icons are a bit ugly looking, even though I applied a few different themes. And that's about it. Now, so far, this has got to be the phone to beat in the gaming device department. I'm talking about especially the refresh rate. This is the highest available on the market. And also some of the best cooling solutions on the market. But for a reason, without them, there will be overheating. So, very high performance, excellent gaming options, very high refresh rate, a powerful CPU, and quite the solid battery. And the camera is a surprise in low light, food photos, and I would also have to say the details of the filming. That's about it from us. Uh, you're definitely going to have a lot of fun with this device and some of this fun is unfair because you have aim assist to help you with your games. This is it from gsno.com. Hope you enjoyed this review. There'll be more in the text review and we're preparing already the review of the successor of the phone, the other one, the next Nubia Red Magic. So far, this has been the review of the uh, Nubia Red Magic 6 Pro. We'll be back with more soon. Bye-bye.